Hi everyone, my name is Sid from the Azure Virtual WAN team, and today I'll be showing you how to achieve custom VNet isolation with Azure Virtual WAN. So in the last video, I showed a simpler scenario for the same use case where you have one hub and you simply want to isolate all the VNets associated to that one hub. So this is a more advanced scenario where we will achieve custom VNet isolation. So some VNets will be able to talk to other VNets and other VNets will be able to talk to another group of VNets. In this case, we've logically divided the VNets into blue and red. So we want to achieve a scenario where this blue VNet can talk to this blue VNet and this red VNet connection will be able to talk to this red VNet connection. Let's go over the routing configurations that we need for this to work. So for our VPN ER point-to-side connections, we need to associate to the default route table as always, and then we will propagate to the default route table, as well as two new custom route tables called route table blue and route table red. For these blue VNet connections, we will both associate and propagate to this new blue custom route table, and this ensures that these blue VNets are able to talk to each other. However, we will also propagate to the default route table, which ensures that the branches are able to talk to these blue VNets as well. And then finally, the red VNet connections, same logic as before, we will associate and propagate to the red route table that is a custom route table, and we will propagate to the default route table. Let's go to Azure portal. And here in Azure portal, I've navigated to my virtual WAN resource. As you can see, I have two hubs. And let's start with hub one. So what I want to do is on this left hand blade, click on routing. And I'm going to start by creating both my blue custom route table as well as my red custom route table. And I'll repeat this process for my second hub as well. So click on plus create route table. We'll call it RT underscore blue. Let's go to labels and labels are a very convenient way to logically group many route tables. So I'll give this one a label of blue, given that we'll have multiple blue route tables and then click on next to associations. I have to associate branches to default so I can associate and then my virtual network connections have not been set up yet. So that is something that I'll have to configure later on. For propagations, I can choose to propagate routes from these branches to this route table. And then simply click here, create. And so while that is cre getting created, I'll click on here plus create route table. And then for name, I will say RT underscore red. For labels, I'll give this one a label of red. Associations, same logic as before, I'll simply click next to propagations. I will propagate my branches to this route table, and then I'll click create. And we'll give that a minute or two to finish updating and make sure that the operation was successful. All right, so it looks like both our custom route tables, the blue custom route table and the red custom route table, were successfully provisioned and it looks like we have two uh, propagating connections. So the branch connection is propagating to the blue route table and then the same branch connection will be propagating to the red route table as well. If you don't see uh, both of these ones, then you can simply edit what connections are propagating these route tables by clicking on the route table and going to propagations and making sure you see yes selected. So let's go back. And what we're going to do now is repeat the same process for hub two. So feel free to skip ahead if you feel confident about this process. Let's so click on routing. Click on create route table. We'll give it a name, RT underscore blue. Click on next to labels. 
give it the same label as blue. Associations, propagations. We do want to propagate our branch connections to this route table. Click create. Then we'll hit plus create route table again. RT underscore red. Next to labels, give it the label red. Next associations, next propagations. Propagate our branch connections to this custom route table and we'll click create. And we'll give that a few minutes to finish updating. All right, so it looks like both of our custom route tables were successfully provisioned. And it looks like our branch connections are propagating to both of these custom route tables because we see the one over here and the one over here. So what we want to do next is ensure that the branches from the other hub, so in this case hub two, the, the remote hub would be hub one, also propagate to this route table. And we want to make sure that the branches connected to hub two are able to propagate to the custom route tables in hub one. So what we can do in order to accomplish that is click on this custom route table. We will go to propagations. And we want to propagate to the blue and red labels. So as you remember earlier, all the blue custom route tables were given this blue label and all the red custom route tables were given this red label. And so this will ensure that even though this branch might be connected to a different hub, because they're in the same virtual WAN instance, it will still propagate to those remote custom route tables. So I'll click here as create. Okay, so now that the branches are propagating to all the labels from hub two, we want to repeat that for hub one. And something to note is I could have had this done by clicking on any of these route tables. So for example, if I were to click on default route table, this is just a quick sanity check and go to propagations. I see that these branches are being propagated to all these labels. So let's go to my virtual WAN resource, go down to hub one. And we'll click on routing on this left hand blade. And then we're going to repeat that same process. So we'll have the branches from hub one propagate to the blue label as well as the red label. So we'll click on the default route table, but any route table would work. And then I will check mark these other labels and click create to update those propagations from the branch. So now our branches are associated to default, propagating to default, all the blue route tables and all the red route tables. What we want to do now is create our virtual network connections with the right configurations for associations and propagations. So we'll click here to navigate to our virtual WAN resource. And then what we'll do is we'll go to virtual network connections on this left hand blade. Give that a second to finish loading. All right, so we're going to add a connection by clicking on plus add connection. And then for connection name, we will say vnagcon1. <coughs> and then for hub, we will say YouTube underscore hub1. Subscription looks fine. Resource group, we will say YouTube underscore isolate underscore vnets. Virtual network, we'll start with spoke underscore vnet1. Definitely don't want to propagate to none. What I want to do is I want to associate to the blue custom route table. So just to make this easier, the odd VNets will be blue and the even VNets will be red. So with VNet1, we will associate to blue, then we will propagate to the default route tables. And this ensures the branches are able to learn these routes, as well as propagate to the blue route tables in each hub. OK, that looks good. So total all propagated to four route tables. And then I can now simply click create. But if I wanted to, I could also have clicked default and blue over here instead of clicking the four route tables and propagate. But it's up to you. It's the exact same behavior either way. And then I can simply click create over here. And then I'm going to repeat the same process for VNet2. So I will say 
being a con two. And then I will say this is still hub one. Resource group. Let's go to my resource group. It's the second spoke VNet for virtual network. And then I want to associate to the red route table. And then here to show you what I was just alluding to earlier, if I want to just propagate to labels, I could simply say default red and hit create. And then I will click add connection again. And now I'll repeat this process for hub two. So VNet con three hubs hub two resource group go to my resource group virtual network is spoke vnet three and then i want to associate to the blue custom route table and then i will propagate to the default route tables as well as the blue route tables and then click create And I'll add my final connection. And then here I will say VNet con four. And then for hubs, I will say hub two. Resource group, I will say my desired resource group. Virtual network spoke underscore VNet four. And then associate route table, I will associate to the red custom route table. And then I will propagate to the default route tables as well as to custom red route tables and then click create. And we'll give that around two to three minutes to finish loading. All right, so it looks like all our virtual network connections were successfully provisioned and we can see that connection one and connection three are associated to the blue route table, connection two and connection four associated to the red route table. And then we can see that they're all propagating to the default route table as well as their respective custom route table. Here in Spoke Vina 2, because we're propagating to labels, it helps us save some time and make it a little bit easier to read, but the effect is essentially the same. We are still propagating to both the default route tables as well as both the red custom route tables because they all have this red label. I wanted to show both how it looks like if you were to simply propagate to labels versus propagate to route tables, but the end result is the same when it comes to routing. And that is how you achieve custom VNet isolation with Azure Virtual WAN in order to logically separate different groups of VNets. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to hit like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.